Hello, new instructor. This is the onboarding video session that will cover pre-course procedures in detail so that you can prepare to teach your class at the right location, with the right materials on hand, and with the correct access to your training facility. The agenda will take you through how a course is created, how you are assigned, contacting the customer to verify the training details, checking your participant equipment and materials, planning your lesson, considerations when working with other training counterparts, stack courses, rosters and course records, certificates, and making travel reservations. Planning to teach a course happens long before the start of your training. Make sure that you are prepared to execute your training by having the right materials, knowledge, and logistical information. Internal Red Cross instructors will be teaching either community or full service classes. Community classes are created by your training scheduler and are available for anyone to pre-register. The scheduler will look at past enrollment trends and history to determine the most successful times and days to hold training. Full service classes are set up by account managers that work with clients that want group training. They will discuss training options that meet the client's needs and the time, date, and location will be at the client's convenience. Community and full service classes, once established, will be posted in the one to work scheduling system. The training scheduler will assign you based on the availability you entered in the system, green for available and red for not available. Typically, you should frequently update your availability in the system at the beginning of each month to reflect the next month. At the beginning of April, for example, you should have your availability drawn up for the month of June. If you were not assigned to any courses when a schedule is published, you can go into the When to Work trade board and request courses that have not been assigned to an instructor. You should confirm with your training scheduler that the exact assignment procedures you should follow um, also including the deadlines to post your availability, the trade board rules, and any kind of scheduling publishing dates. You will receive an email confirming the courses that you are assigned. Please review these emails promptly as you should call the training scheduler within 24 hours of being assigned if there is a conflict. If we notice a pattern in last minute cancellations, we will take steps to remove you from our instructor list. You are expected and are responsible for your course logistics, meaning you should make sure you know how many students you are teaching, when you are teaching, and what equipment you will need. For community classes, you will not need to contact the students since the class will be taught at a Red Cross branch and because all the students will be pre-registered and will know the exact amount. However, you should contact an administrative staff member to determine logistical details like facility access, training and AV equipment, alarm and storage codes. This is especially important if you are teaching for the first time or are visiting a Red Cross facility for the first time. If you don't have access to instructor's desk, you will have to ask your service delivery admin to send you the course roster via email. For full service courses, you will need to contact the client. Since these are off-site contracted trainings, we have to double check all the logistical details with the customer, including student count, training components, site address, room size, and any special needs. Review the training contacts so you have existing details to confirm with the client. This needs to be done over the phone and at minimum three business days prior to the course start. There is a script you can use to call the client, which will have all the questions you need to ask outlined. There is also a follow-up template so that you can email the client a confirmation of the details of your conversation. This is also one way to document that you actually comply with, the, with contacting the full service client three business days before. Copy your training specialist in the post phone conversation confirmation email so that you get credit for completing this step. This slide shows a sample script used to call a full service customer three days before. Contact your training specialist to get a copy of the script specific to your territory or region. And if you have access to the instructor library and SharePoint, there should be a copy of it in your territory or region folder. Equipment procedures vary by territory and region due to the unique geographical and resource properties. 
In some areas, equipment is checked out to the instructor to take home, and in some, the equipment is shared, or a mixture of the two. Make sure that if you do have equipment checked out to you, that you reorder what we call consumables in a timely manner. These are the non-reusable items like longs, training kits, and wipes. If you do not have equipment assigned to you, contact the PHSS administrator to coordinate access to supplies well in advance of your course. If you wait until the day before your class to contact us, you may not be able to reach someone or there may not be materials available by then. Review your schedule to determine how much equipment and consumables you will need to have. For example, if you notice that you will have a large course coming up, say for example 30 participants, make sure to coordinate this as soon as possible so that you have enough supplies to conduct the course. Realistically, however, you will probably be interfacing with a co-instructor if a course is that large. Handouts are considered a part of your equipment. In some locations, you'll be assigned an instructor box or file document box that you can use to keep your course handouts and reference materials organized. There will be handouts that you will keep and some that the students will take home. As a pre-course measure, make sure that you make copies in advance that you don't have to worry about dealing with a malfunctioning copy machine the day of your training. These are take-home handouts, the digital certification flyer, the volunteer recruitment flyer, and the PHSS business card. Make sure you have enough to provide one to each student to take home. The health precautions handout can be reused so you will only need to make enough copies to maintain a classroom set. However, the CAPS evaluations will be provided to all students and collected after they have filled out the survey questions um, completely. Make sure that you have enough copies so that every student in all of your courses can take the survey. This survey is short. It's only one page back and front. Also keep in mind that these evaluations are program specific. There's a different one for the lay responder, professional, and babysitting program. Plan out in advance how you will be submitting these surveys, as you will need to snail mail them through U.S. mail to the location designated by your training specialist. In some locations, you may be provided stamps. In other locations, a mail stamp meter machine may be available. If you end up having to purchase your own stamp, we can reimburse you at your request. Make sure that you know what manual and materials you are using for the specific course you are teaching. The manuals and materials change by program and in some cases change by course format. For example, if you're using the course presentation, there is one that is formatted for the full course and one that is formatted for the blended learning course. This is because the full course presentation has the lecture points and activities embedded with the video segments while the blended learning version of the course presentation only has the video segments embedded. Blended learning courses also have their own instructor manual or supplement that we use to teach the class that is different from the full course instructor manuals. Review and challenge courses have a reference checklist instead of a manual. For full courses, be aware of the content flow and utilization of the activities, lesson wrap-ups, skill sessions, skills charts, skill assessment tools, and end-of-course scenarios. Also, familiarize yourself with the participants' cards and books so that you can easily point them to the panels and pages during lectures and skill sessions. Typical training staff in a course can be divided into instructors and instructor aides or assistants. If you are working with another instructor or instructor assistant aide, make sure that you know what role you play within the training staff. If you are the primary instructor, you are responsible for contacting the co-instructor and or instructor aide to confirm logistical details. Co-instructors must be assigned to teach part of the course and close to half of the course if they are going to get credit as an instructor on record. Instructor aides are not certified instructors. However, they are trained in CPR and can use their knowledge to help participants refine their skills during skill sessions. Instructor aides can help with setting up the class, signing in participants, and breaking down and cleaning up at the end of the course. 
If an instructor wants to observe the course and not teach, they do not get credit as a co-instructor on record. Observing is not co-instructing. Stack classes is a method we use to schedule more than one component group at a time so that participants can register for the component grouping that meets their needs. The component groups are scheduled to start at the same time so that participants that are registered for the group that has more components will stay longer while the participants scheduled in the session with less components in the group will be done sooner. For example, if we stack an adult CPR AED course with an adult CPR AED first aid course, the participants in the component group with First aid will stay longer, and the participants that only signed up for adult CPR AED component group will be done sooner because it has less components. This scheduling approach allows us to maximize our enrollments, especially in areas where we struggle to fill our classrooms with participants. This also allows us to diversify what we offer so participants register only for the components that they want or need. Prior to a stat course, Make sure you know what order you will be teaching your components so the participants that enrolled for less components can leave as soon as they completed those component skill sessions, lectures, activities, and the required end of course scenarios if applicable. Documentation is a key component to ensuring that students receive their certifications accurately and promptly. We have two types of training documentation. One is pre-printed rosters and the other our course record sheets. Pre-printed rosters are used for community classes, so students can pre-enroll for training and enter their information during registration. If you have access to the instructor's desk through the Learning Center, you can download your community course roster on demand. If you don't have access to the instructor's desk, contact your service delivery admin to get the roster emailed to you. If you are teaching a staff course, you will have multiple rosters one roster for each component group or offering. Course records are used to document full service courses because the participant will not have to be pre-enrolled. Make sure you have copies of the course record and addendum sheets so that you can fill out the course record with the training information and the participants can fill out their information on the addendum. In the, in the, in the rare case where there is a stack course for a full service, you don't need separate course records. Just break up the components on the addendum and mark the participants that completed the corresponding components. The current standard for certifications is to issue digital certifications to all students. All students will receive their digital certification after the course. When preparing for your training, make sure that you have some pre-printed certificate card stock in case you have a student that urgently requests proof of course completion or a wallet card. Honor the request by handwriting their name on this temporary card. Some full-service clients may request wallet cards for their group on the day of training. Handwrite certificates for the participants that show up and complete the training. Travel plans should be made well in advance to create the most cost-effective arrangement. Some Red Cross chapters have company vehicles that can be borrowed for business travel. For travel that is expected to be more than 100 miles round trip, you can make arrangements for a car rental. If you use your personal car to, or personal card to pay for a car rental, you can submit the charge for reimbursement. There are special cases where we use alternative forms of transportation, such as a taxi, train, bus, or shuttle, or car service. Discuss this and any other alternative commuting reservation with your training specialist to get approval. If your travel is far enough from your home to require hotel stay, we can certainly arrange that with approval. Make sure you have your tax exempt certificate ready to show at the hotel to avoid additional charges. Here is an example of the Red Cross State Tax Exemption Certificate for being a nonprofit organization. This example is for the state of Florida. You can get a copy of this form from your training specialist or from the um, SharePoint document sharing site of your area. Here is a summary of the pre-course procedures. Make sure that you update your availability by the 15th of each month on when to work and check for class assignments when the schedule is published. Also, 
be on the lookout for available courses on the trade board. For full service classes, make sure that you contact the customer three business days prior to confirm all logistical details using the script. Verify you con your contact with the customer by sending a follow-up email to the client and copying your training specialist. Make sure you have enough equipment and materials for all the classes you are assigned to teach, keeping in mind that placing an order for more materials could take up to a month to arrive. If you have your own instructor box, make sure that you have plenty of copies of your handouts to distribute during training. Review the course content and lesson plan to ensure you are teaching the correct class and course using the right presentation, video, manual, component order, and are familiar with the participant materials. If you are co-teaching or working as or with an instructor's aide, make sure that you have spoken with your training counterparts prior to the course to discuss course logistics and division of work. If you are teaching a stack course, make sure you have all the rosters for each group and are teaching in the correct order so participants can leave when expected. Be mindful to have a pre-populated roster printed for your community courses and copies of the course record and addendums for your full service classes. Have some pre-printed certificate card stock on hand in case you have an urgent request for a wallet card. And make sure to arrange travel in advance to avoid last minute costly commuting plans. If you have to pay for a car rental or hotel out of pocket, keep the receipts so we can reimburse you.